In the previous video, we developed a bot for generating images for Pinterest. And today we will finish what we started by creating a bot for mass uploading pins, enabling us to start receiving free traffic. Our bot will be capable of automatically logging into accounts and uploading a specified number of pins with a defined timeout, working with a large number of accounts, utilizing proxies, saving cookies for future account logins. Before we dive into the process, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button because in the next two videos, I wanna teach you how to create a coloring book generator for selling on Amazon, as well as a generator for a trending and low competition product for Etsy. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in these topics. Now, let's get started. Part one, installing packages. For our work, we will be using the Pi3 Pinterest library. It is an unofficial Pinterest API implemented in Python 3 that allows us to perform various tasks on Pinterest. We will be working within our Pinterest bot project from the previous video. If you haven't watched it yet, please do so and create the project in PyCharm. Install the required libraries, create the necessary folders and files, and copy the code. Open the project and access the terminal. Enter the following command to install the library. Now create a new Python file named image generator in the project folder and transfer all the code from the main py file of the previous lesson into this new file. We will run the image generator from this file while the main py file will be used for our uploader. After installing the Py3 Pinterest library, we need to modify some code in the Pinterest class to address some Logan issues. These issues and the required code changes are described on this GitHub page. However, I will also explain how to do it. In the main PI file, add this import statement, then press and hold the control or command key and navigate to the Pinterest class. At this line, replace the code with this. At lines 208 and 209, replace the code with this. At this line, replace the code with this one. Now, logging into accounts and saving cookies will be performed correctly. During testing of the bot, I noticed that working with authenticated proxies is not functioning correctly. Therefore, we need to make some changes to the Pinterest class and install Selenium Wire to fix this issue. Let's do it. Replace the import on line 12 with the following import statement. Next, scroll down to the login method. At these lines, replace the code with this one. Then on these lines, replace the code with this. After that, go to the terminal and install Selenium Wire by executing the following command. Now, working with authenticated proxies will function correctly. By the way, if you are looking for good proxies based on my own experience, I can tell you that I really like the proxies from WebShare. They are very fast and affordable proxy servers with a modern control panel that offers many features. So, follow the link in the description and get 10 proxies for free today. Part two, writing the code. Copy the code provided in the link in the description into the main PI file. The code consists of imports, two functions, and the conditional if name statement. The open accounts function reads data from the accounts CSV file and returns a list of accounts ready for work. The pin function takes the list of accounts, the number of pins to be placed, and the delay between them as arguments. Inside this function, we iterate over each account in the accounts list. We extract the email, password, username, proxy, folder, and link values from the account. Then, we initialize an instance of the Pinterest class with the extracted account information and login. We retrieve a list of previously generated images from a specific project folder and shuffle the order. For each image, we extract the title and board name from the file name and construct a description. We search for a matching board by name and retrieve its ID. Then, we upload the pin using the retrieved board ID, image file path, description, and title. If the upload is successful, we move the uploaded image to a pinned directory. Inside the conditional if name statement, we declare variables for the number of pins and the delay between them and assign them the necessary values. We then call the function to read account data. If there are accounts ready for work, we call the pin function with the accounts, number of pins, and timeout as arguments. Part three, preparing the account CSV file. Now let's prepare the file with the account data. Create CSV file with the following columns or download the template using the link provided in the description. Fill in the cells with the Pinterest account data. Enter the email, password, and username of the account. If necessary, specify the proxy in the indicated format, then indicate the name of the project folder where we saved the generated images in the previous video. In the link column, provide the link of the promoted landing page or pre-lander. It is advisable not to use direct affiliate links 
as social networks may not appreciate that. It is better to use a pre-lander such as one created on Google Sites or use a traffic tracker. In my work, I use a traffic tracker, which allows me to filter out bots, split traffic, and change the product link if needed. If you are using a tracker, you should insert the campaign URL from the tracker into the link column. In the first cell of the table, enable the account by entering the digit one. Use zero to disable the account. When saving or exporting the file, it is important to know the delimiter used. This is crucial for correctly reading the data. In my case, the delimiter is a semicolon. If you have a different delimiter, you can modify in the code in that specific line. After exporting the file, move it to the data folder of our project. Part four, actions before uploading, account setup and creating boards. Before uploading, it's necessary to set up the account and create the boards for pinning. Come up with a name and description for your account. Here are a couple of prompts for ChatGPT. Next, create and upload a profile photo and header image for your account. Now it's time to create boards for pinning. Take the board names from the first column of the table that we used for image generation. If you want to upload all the images to one board or reduce the number of boards, make the necessary changes in the table and regenerate the images. Once you have completed the account setup and created the boards, we are ready to launch the bot. Part five, running the bot. Make sure that the images are generated and located in the images folder. Also ensure that the account CSV file is in the data folder. Now specify the number of pins to upload and the delay between them by assigning these values to the respective variables. After that, run the code. That's it. Our bot is ready to go. It works great and saves us a lot of time. See you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video.